Okay, uh, welcome to a uh, another one, uh, another replay. Uh, anyway, this one is another short. Um, I think this one was a little over 19 minutes. So this was this was one of the biggest stomps I've had in the longest time. And the best part was going into it. Me and Negro were really unsure. Like, I didn't. We we had. I forget who our mid laner was gonna be. It wasn't Zarin. It was some of, hmm, excuse me, it was someone else, Maybe and we were both so like, strong. yeah, this is good, this is good, and then he went the Zareth, and we were like, oh, okay, that's probably not so good, because their mid laner is possibly Cho'Gath or Jax, and I thought I was going to be against Jax top, honestly, uh, which, yeah, probably was going to be bad for me. Cho'Gath, I mean, that's probably also going to be bad for me, to be honest. I don't think either one is great. But I was... I didn't know what else to pick at this point, so I was just like, whatever, I'm playing Mordekaiser. I think mid lane... Actually, I think mid lane was going to be a Kali. That's what it was. And so I was like, yeah, split damage. You know, we're going to have a good mix. It's going to be great. Uh, but then he changed to the Zareth, and I was like, oh, I think you're going to get dumpstered by the, the Jax, but whatever. And, uh, I mean, our bot lane I was fine with. I, I, I don't like as I don't like seeing as on my team. I, I'm happy to see him on the enemy team. The champs, I think, just garbage. Um, I think, honestly, I think, actually, I don't think he's garbage. I just don't think he should be an ADC. I feel like he should be, like, a melee, or, like, an AD caster mid option. Like, you see a lot of Lucian mid now. That's starting to become popular. Tristana mid is also starting to become popular. Um, so I would like to see him rotate to the mid, to be honest, and out of the AD carry room. Because his early game is just too shitty. Uh, you're just going to be losing. So here's Negro's first counter jungle on uh, Amumu. And I like Amumu jungle. To be honest, in fact, I just like Amumu as a champion. He has so much like CC, a ton of AOE, and he can just destroy team fights. But I had no idea he was that vulnerable early in his jungle. And Negro just makes him pay this game, like pay the price. I don't know why Jax did that. To be honest, I think he could have tried to maybe flash into the dragon pit or you know something to get away i don't think jumping back onto the zareth was a smart play and i'm sure he must have seen negro coming into the lane because of the minions you know that was kind of weird uh negro's 2-0 and at this point so he's uh he's definitely having a good thing a good uh a good start to this and then this is where we started to get concerned our mid laner like DCs and we're like, oh what? Why did he DC? Is it because Negro took his kill or something? But then he came back and he was like just as confused as we were about the DC. And I think there was a game maybe after this that I played and where I was just like, oh man, I'm having this weird lag or something. And my game would just freeze and pick up again later, freeze. So it was... um. There, there was a lot going on on Riot's side, I think, last night, which is when this game took place, which will probably be nothing, or mean nothing, rather, by the time I put this up, so. But anyway, uh, I'm having a pretty decent time against Cho'Gath. He's not having a very good time landing his knockups on me, I felt like, and uh, he was eating a ton of poke from me. Even though he was sustaining a bit, you know, from his passive, it still felt like it wasn't really his mana was the issue like maybe if his health was coming back fine but he wasn't getting any mana back and i think that's a, that's a big mistake for him to not have started with like biscuits or something uh negro's going for another invade i think he just like i thought he got too cocky there somehow he kills the um amumu he leaves that kill for the zareth which is choice i'm glad he did that um, but then their bot lane shows up, and I don't know. I don't know why, I think, <sighs> yeah. I mean, they did they did get a kill, they go one for one there, but I think if Negro, or not Negro, sorry, if the, um, 
who is it? The Zareth had have just continued running away there, he probably wouldn't have died. And I think our bot lane may have still gotten the kill, so... All in all, like a 3 for 1 I think is still worth. It just puts us farther ahead. Necro still hasn't even gone back, so he's got 3 kills, 2 assists. When he... Like, this is going to be a big buy for him, for sure. Uh, I'm actually dominating the top lane in terms of farm at this point. And he's going for, I think it's the Rod, yeah, Rod of Ages, which is good. I mean, no one's going to say it's not good. But I just don't know if you should go for Rod of Ages if it's a match you feel like you're losing. Uh, I would have liked to see him turn it into the other item. Or maybe go for, like, a more defensive option and just try to, like, farm up. The Dart Seal, I feel, was a little bit greedy. I remember commenting to Negro when we were playing. I'm like, oh, he's getting some big dog value out of that. And there was like zero stacks. And then I think he died, and I'm like, can it go into negative stacks? Could he, should he lose AP for being so bad? Uh, yeah, I'm six. I just take him into the Death Realm. I'm like, I, I don't see how this works for you. I'm just not going to get low enough to where your ult is even a threat to me. So that was pretty good. Negro again, just counter jungling the Samumu. Like, he's just living for that at this point. We're basically trying to tilt the Samumu out of the game. And, uh, yeah, he kills him again at another at his blue buff this time, not his red buff. So, Amumu's 0 and 3. <laughs> he's got 24 farm. Like, he's not having a good day. This Amumu at this point. I don't know that he can be relevant even by the time he gets to late game. Uh, for jungle camps, being down like 25 farm, that's a lot. That's a lot of jungle clears. So Jinx does a good job zoning him with their traps here off of the drag, and Leona takes up a few hits. She goes in on the uh, Jinx, or no, on the Ezreal, but. Negro's just there to clean it up. I mean, I think that's the thing, is he's so far ahead. He's even a level up on the mid lane, right? A solo lane. He gets super cocky, his team just leaves him to die. Uh, so that one's on him. He was, he was being a bad kid. Or greedy, one or the other. So I decide, you know, Negro's taking his blue buff. Oh, I should take his red buff, you know? Uh, let's let's give Amumu no camps this game, as, as few camps as possible. I think I also took the River Crab, maybe, or no, no, I just went to get the Cho. Yeah, I was thinking about getting the River Crab though, because uh, I didn't want to really farm under tower and just have Cho keep doing that knock up to me uh, under tower, because that's so much poke and um, that's really annoying. I've had other Cho do me do that to me in the past where you're trying to farm and it's just a constant barrage of spikes coming out of the ground. I get a pull on him there, I'm like, yep, you're done. You know, I'm just gonna proc this. And yeah, he, he didn't even really move, he just kind of stood there. So I'm like, even if my ult ends, you're still never gonna get away from me to get back to your tower to safety. So, just seemed like a free kill. And I guess the red buff really helped in terms of like, making it so he couldn't move very fast. Uh, Negro's trying to... He it, Actually, it was funny. Negro knew that uh, Amumu would be here. I remember him saying it to me. I'm like, He's like, I bet he's at those things. And I was like, really? And he's like, yep. And sure enough, that's where he was standing. So he just kills him again. I mean, Amumu got one kill, which is good. That's for sure. But he's also got... 10, or 10 more farm in the time since he died last time, so... Jinx with a good ult, uh, good CC by Leona, and yeah, Bird's just not getting away from that. And Ezreal, I mean, what's he gonna do to follow up? He has no items, no cooldown, that's what I mean, like, his auto attack really is garbage, his spells are slow early, plus their skill shots, so, you know, if you miss, he's doing nothing. Um, yeah. 
I remember on that gank, we were, like, Negro was looking for it, and I think as soon as Cho'Gath went down the river, he was just like, go, 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 go. Like, he's, he's screwed now. So, I think this is the game, too, where me and Negro were testing something, because does he have the Rift Herald? Maybe not. See, and this is what I was worried about with the Zeret. Uh, Jax just jumping on him. Do Yeah, he did use the Rift Herald there. So we were testing something because I was telling Negro that the Rift Herald always takes two plates. And he was like, really? And I was like, yeah, man, check it out. So we got it down to two. The Rift Herald hit it once, took it out completely. So here I'm just trying to walk it in to make sure I get the hit on that tower. Uh, Amumu jumps me, and I think I ult him so that I can't get 2v1 because I'm not going to have a chance of fighting them 2v1, I don't think, with all their CC and especially so close to the tower. Um, yeah, and I'm certainly not going to kill Amumu. I'm not tower diving him, so uh, it just helped keep me alive. And I think I had a lot of money. I think I bought that Leandries just outright with all the money I had. So I knew when I came back to lane, I, I was like, or I, I knew that I was way stronger than I was right then in lane. So if I just backed off and then came back, you know, I would I'd definitely hit my power spike. Xerath just doing annoying Xerath stuff, po poking the uh, Mumu under tower. Here's the Jax again, jumps in, does a stun, you know, beats up the Xerath. And, and I just figured this is what's going to be going on all game. But then as you see, Necro just dives into the lane and yeah. So Jinx is in the back. I don't know. I think she should have been on her machine gun. She's got no mana. I think the increased attack speed would have really helped. Uh, Jax gets the stun again. And and honestly, that's how that lane should have just gone. In my in my mind, that's how it went. You know, maybe he does flash away from one of Jax's engages, fine. But the next time Jax walks up to him, he's he's basically screwed. So that played out pretty much the way I intended. Uh, Cho'Gath backs here. He's got his Rod of Ages at, you know, 13 minutes in. Which means it's not going to turn into... Or it's not going to max out until 22 minutes. And the game didn't even go that long. So, yeah. Like I say, I'm not sure that's the best buy. Especially when you're behind. I think if you're ahead and you realize, like, hey, I can build this, like, you know, pre-10 minutes, then, yeah, I mean, definitely do it. Ooh, Bard looking for that sultry Jinx bootay. Not gonna get it. I didn't even know Jax was below me there. I don't know why the two of them didn't jump me, to be honest. They just let me take that jungle farm for free. Amumu's kind of camping mid now, trying to shut this Zareth down and get the Jax fed, which, you know, makes sense. Jax is a, a really, like, hard carry late game if he gets fed, so, yeah, why wouldn't you do that? Not sure why Red didn't rotate down and make a play for that Infernal Dragon, though. Again, it's one of the first two, so you know it's going to be the only Infernal in the game. And that could be a way to get your team back into it, as long as you can, you know, survive till the late game. And those percentages can maybe give you a little bit more than, you know, 10 uh, AP or AP. But if you're just going to give away dragons, you're probably going to lose. Like, that's something I've realized too over the, the last week or so here, is that... Even though the dragon buffs in and of themselves aren't really all that important, it, it just seems if you're getting them, you're probably going to win the game. And whether that's your team rotating to objectives better, it, and that's why, you know, like, because I don't think the um, dragons are the reason anyone's winning. I feel they're just a symptom of the team. Uh, Jinx with another close range ult for the kill, dodges the Ez skill shot, you know, that's what I'm talking about, right? Um, as long as you do that, he really has nothing for you. Jack's going in on me because he thinks he's a big deal. Uh, I guess he wasn't paying attention to what happened top. Uh, they do take me down for the shutdown, which sucks. I hate giving away 450 gold. But, 
Negro's so strong, he just cleans up both of them. And so I'm like, yeah, that's fine. So now we've got Zareth with a free wave top, just pushing in. Negro's pushing in mid, he's gonna get this tower. And, uh, and bot lane's already got their first tower. So, you know, the map around the red side's really starting to close in. And Amumu hasn't had, you know, control over his jungle this whole game because Negro's just been in there stealing every every jungle camp he can get. Um, and it's not getting easier when you lose those outer towers. And there's no wards down. In fact, I don't think there's a ward down. Oh, sorry. There's one blue ward that Leona just put down in the dragon pit. And maybe Zareth put a ward down in the top side of red jungle there before he backed off. Uh, yeah, I wanted to get that uh, um, jungle camp there because uh, Zareth had taken my lane farm and Negro wanted to go back and I'm like, well, I'm getting Rift Herald, dude. I'm not going to let that go away. So he's like, yeah, cool. I'll, I got a back to buy, but I'll come help you. So I was watching the jacks in the top lane. I was thinking to myself, man, if he comes down on me, I am boned hard. But then this fight breaks out mid, and I'm thinking to myself, no, this is where the attention's going to be. No one's going to be thinking about Rift Herald at this point. They're just going to be thinking about these three guys in the mid lane and this fight that they could possibly get. Jinx gets hit with a Cho'Gath knockup that seems to really mess her up. I come in with a nice Q. I ult a Mumu so there's no follow-up to his stun. And then I'm hoping that gives my team a chance to, you know, kind of peel back. I kill the Amumu. Uh, now I'm sitting in the back line. Jax tries to go on me again. I'm like, I don't even care, Jax. Whatever. And my team, you know, I got Zareth with the long range. I got Jinx uh, backing me up. Negro with his axes. So I feel fine about being in the front line because I know my team's able to, like, throw some damage at me. Uh, there's so many times where you come out of your alt and your team has just left you, you know? They're not even paying attention or they think you're dead. And it's like, no guys, I could still live. Oh, oh, oh no, I'm dead now. I just got, just got raped up by the whole team. So yeah, we get, you know, some good traction with the Rift Herald. Uh, I would have liked to get a hit on an inhib tower, but I was like, or uh, sorry, a nexus tower, but I'm like, let's not be greedy, let's just back. And I think I had a ton of money here too. I'm pretty sure when I go back, uh, I buy an out of gold, like outright. So Negro and our bot lane, again, just stealing everything they can out of their jungle. I was going to back there, but Jax was pushing up so hard that I was like, this is too risky. And then Leona gets caught in their jungle, but she they don't they can't kill her very easily or something. So I'm like, well I guess I'm not gonna get to back, and we just end up collapsing on the lane here in the jungle. And Negro leads the charge and he's just uh, slowing him and letting us catch up to them. Uh, I grabbed the Amumu there, Jinx is just following. Uh, I ulted uh, I can't even tell who that is. Oh the Cho'Gath. And then that just left the Jax alive for the rest of my team to clean up. So <clears throat> I think I'm sitting on like 3,000 gold at this point, and they only have the Jax. And even though the cooldown timers aren't that long, I mean, we've got a Jinx, we've got Mundo, and me with um, Nasher's tooth. There's no way these objectives survive. So just like this was one of the most donkiest games I have seen. You look at the time bar right now, there's not a red icon on the whole top of that bar. Like, they didn't get anything. Uh, it was, you know, it was really bad. They didn't... That Amumu probably was pretty ragey, I think. 50 farm down on Negro at the end? That's not a place where you want to be. Top lane? 50 farm down. I think they said in the chat at the end of the game, someone someone on the enemy team's like, oh yeah, that's that's what you do first time champ in ranked. And someone else piped up and said, yeah, he didn't even know how to play his champ. And I was like, me and Negro were like, what? How do you not know how to play Cho'Gath? And he was like, no, the guy didn't know what Mordekaiser did. And I was like, oh, oh but he picked Cho'Gath into me. And he was like, yeah. 
So we just threw our hands up. We're like, whatever, we'll take the free LP. We're like, fair enough, right? So anyway, another uh, short, easy win. Uh, pretty, pretty stompy. But this is this is how unbalanced the games are in silver. You know, they're either uh, you're getting stomped out or the enemy team is getting stomped out. But very few games left end in less than 20 minutes. So. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Hope you uh, learned something about how not to get stomped out super bad. But if not, oh well, it's silver. It's bad kid life. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace.